I make my living helping aspiring actuaries like you achieve success in the actuarial field. And that means that over and over and over and over again, I hear of some of the common problems that aspiring actuaries are running into. So in today's video, I'm going to bring light to those issues so that you know in advance that they're coming and so that you know how to deal with them when they happen. And notice I said when they're not if, because almost every aspiring actuary runs into at least one of these issues at some point in their actuarial journey. I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of over 400 aspiring actuaries in the Actuary Accelerator community. Now, let me ask you this question. Have you ever wondered if the actuarial career is the right path for you? If you have, you are not alone. Almost every aspiring actuary has gone through this phase at one point or another where they're just questioning whether this is the right path for them. Sometimes it's when they get a low GPA, sometimes it's when they fail an actuarial exam, sometimes it's because they're starting this journey later in their life, maybe their 30s, their 40s, even maybe their 50s. But other times it's because they learn the difficulty of the exams or they learn how hard it might be to get a job and that just fills them with self-doubt and indecision. For me, it was when I failed an exam in school. It wasn't an actuarial exam, it was just one of my school course exams. I failed it and at that time I just felt like maybe I'm not smart enough to pursue this career, maybe I'm not good enough and it just filled me with a lot of doubt about the career. So if you are currently in this situation or have ever felt it, I completely understand where you are coming from. But here's the thing, you're running into this problem because there are so many different career options for you. As someone that's interested in the actuarial career, I assume that you are someone that's very dedicated, you love math, you probably want to get into a career that involves tech and stuff like that. So there are just so many options for you right now. It completely makes sense that you're kind of indecisive about what direction you want to do. But when there are so many options, it's really hard to make a decision. We tend to overthink it, we do pros and cons lists, and really even after that there's no clear decision. So if you've done your research and you know that the actuarial career would be a great fit, you love the benefits that come with it, and you're okay with the negative aspects of it too, then you have just got to make a decision and say enough is enough, I am going to go for it. Every career has pros and cons, you are not going to find a career that doesn't have that. So once you have made the final decision to go for your actuarial dream, then you just have to focus, concentrate, and go all in. You'll have to grow to a top actuarial candidate and inevitably you'll be able to get your first actuarial job and from there your career can flourish. Okay, so once an aspiring actuary has finally decided to stop flip-flopping between yes and no to the actuarial career, well then some other problems start to arise. The one I hear most commonly is that they're really having trouble fitting in study time around work, school, family, taking care of themselves, all that sort of stuff. Time management is a huge issue for aspiring actuaries. You might actually remember me talking about this one time in the past. There was a point where I was trying to juggle school, work, family, a boyfriend, sports, all at the same time. And that's when I failed my actuarial exam. I just didn't have enough time to fully study for it. And this is a problem that so many aspiring actuaries run into. Let me know in the comments, do you feel right now that you are a bit overloaded, like you have too much going on to fit in adequate study time? Let me know down below. I know that was a major problem for me too. So when you're in the midst of this problem, it can really feel frustrating. You're trying to find ways to study late at night. You're exhausted after working all day, you really don't feel like you can focus and concentrate, and you just want to rest, but you can't. So how do you overcome this problem? The answer isn't to be more disciplined or to work harder or to manage your time better. Those things aren't going to work if you're overloaded. So here's what I tell Actuary Accelerator community members. You have to evaluate and eliminate. That means you have to evaluate each thing that you are spending time on each and every day, and you have to eliminate that to three or four different priorities and of course studying has to be one of those. Everything else has to go temporarily though. Remember this is only something that you're going to have to do while you're growing your professional and actuarial career. It's not something that you have to do long term, it's just right now while you're trying to get into this field. There is literally no other way around it. You can't ask a genie in a bottle to clone yourself and have that clone do your studying for you. Unfortunately I wish that was something that you could do but you can't. So you've really got to reduce the amount
amount of stuff that you have on your plate. There is no other way around it. By the way, if a genie in a bottle could create a clone of yourself and you could have it do whatever you don't want to do, what would it be? Let me know down in the comments. For me, it would definitely 100% be cleaning the house because cleaning is just the worst chore ever. <laughs> okay, so next. Once an aspiring actuary passes a few exams, then usually they start to apply for actuarial jobs. And as to be expected, the job offers don't just come flying in overnight. Sometimes all you get is rejection email after rejection email after rejection email, not talking from experience at all. But it's at this stage that aspiring actuaries most often feel like giving up. They feel discouraged. They wonder if they're ever going to be able to get an actuarial job and it completely kills their motivation. But here's the good news. Just because you're having trouble finding a job right now doesn't mean that that's going to be the case forever. There are things that you can do, changes and improvements that you can make that are going to help you get that actuarial job. Really, there are two common reasons that I see over and over again for reasons why aspiring actuaries have trouble getting a job. And we help with both of these problems in the Actuary Accelerator community. So reason number one is because the qualifications that the aspiring actuary brings to the table really aren't enough yet to stand out among all the other qualifications that other candidates have. So basically this means that the aspiring actuary isn't a top candidate yet, but that doesn't mean that they can't be. It's just going to take a little more time and effort. Reason number two is that the candidate has a lot of great qualifications. It's just that they haven't been able to clearly articulate those to the employers. And that's causing employers not to really understand the value and the benefit that the candidate can bring to the company. This means that the candidate's resume, LinkedIn profile, interview strategy, and cover letter maybe need to be revised, edited, maybe even rearranged so that employers can really understand the skill set that the candidate has and will be willing to offer to the company. Fortunately, this doesn't take long to change. So if you feel that you're a top candidate already, then this is where you're going to want to look. Okay, so if this video has been helpful for you, could you please give it a thumbs up so that it can spread to more aspiring actuaries and help them overcome these problems as well? I would appreciate that so, so much. Now, a lot of what we have talked about today revolves around becoming a top actuarial candidate. And Brighton is someone who did just that. Fortunately, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview Brighton and see what he did to get his first actuarial job in just one and a half years. That is all the time it took him and now he is happily working in an actuarial role. So I highly recommend you go watch that video next. I will link to it right here and I will see you next week. Bye for now.